Sunday at Kajang Assembly of God. Whether you are here physically in our sanctuary or whether you're watching online, we want to invite you to prepare your heart to worship God and to expect something great and exciting from Him today. Proverbs 16:1 says that the preparation of the heart belongs to man. So come. Let us prepare our heart to communicate with the great I am. There's only one God, the God of heaven and earth, and He's our God. Let us look up to Him. Let us focus on Him and Him alone. May I invite you to stand to your feet and just focus on our God. Relax. Put aside whatever is bogging you this morning, whatever is on you. Dislodge it from your mind and put it at the feet of Jesus. Ask God to take over your thoughts. Focus on Him. Confess any sin that you may have committed knowing or unknowingly. Come before Him with righteousness. Because God has promised that if we confess our sin, He will forgive us. Think about His blessing in your life. Every little blessing. Yes, thank God. Thank God for His blessing. Thank God that you can be here this morning. Thank God that you can come together as children of God to worship Him this morning. Thank God for every little blessing in your life. Ask Him for a special encounter today. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, he says that the Word of God says that, that if we ask according to His will, He hears. And if He hears, then it can be taken that it is done. He will do what He hears. So therefore, confidently come before Him now. Ask Him for that very special encounter this morning. Speak to God in your own way. Lift up your voice of prayer to Him. 
shikri and the bara 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 shikri and the bara shikri and the bara shikri and the bara 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 bara. Yes, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for your blessings, Lord. Yes, Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Shikri and the bara shikri shikri and the bara shikri and the bara shikri and the bara shikri. Yes, Jesus, yes, Lord, yes, Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for this beautiful morning, Lord, that we can gather as your children to worship you. Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to help us, Lord, to worship in truth and in spirit, Lord Father. Father, lead, let our worship, Lord, rise up to you, Lord, as a sweet-smelling fragrance, Lord Jesus. Lord, let our spirits, Lord, each one of us, Lord, let our spirit commune with your Holy Spirit this morning, Lord Father. Lord, and prepare our heart, Lord, to receive your word this morning, Lord Father. Father, we pray, Lord Father, that you will touch each and every heart, Lord Father, and give them a special word this morning, Lord Father. Father, we ask you, Lord Father, to anoint our worship team and led by Sister Sarah, Lord Father. Father, that you will anoint, Lord, this worship, Lord, and that will help the congregation, Lord, to come and worship you, Lord, with your whole heart and mind and spirit, Lord Father. Father, we also want to ask to commit, Lord, Pastor George, into your hands, Lord, even as he brings the word today, Lord. Anoint his lips, Lord. Every word that comes out of his mouth, Lord, will be from you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that he, can, he will bring forth the word of God, Lord, with clarity and conviction, Lord Father. We commit this whole worship service to you, Lord Father. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised. He is to be filled above all gods. So are you ready to worship the Lord?
the one that is seated on high, the one who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. God, you are worthy of all praise. Jesus.
worship and prayer. Let's lift up the nation of India to Lord, the Lord. As you know, we have been praying for different nations on the month of July where we have outreaches and today we want to pray for the nation of India. Let's lift up the nation of India to the Lord. Speak in tongues and pray for the needs of India. Yes, Lord. Shikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri. Yes, Jesus. Shikri and the Barabara 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 Shikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri and the Bar. Yes, Lord, we want to lift up the nation of India, Lord Father. Father, your political situation, Lord Father. Father, your poverty situation, Lord Jesus. Just lift up the nation of India, Lord Jesus. Shikri and the Barashikri and the Barabara Barabara Shikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri and the Barashikri. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, we bring to you, Lord, the nation of India, Lord Father. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord, upon that nation, Lord. Father, that every single soul in that nation is important, Lord, to you. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for each and every... Uh, worker, Lord, that you have put in that land, Lord Father. Father, we want to praise you, Lord, for the pastors and workers in that country, Lord Father. Father, we want to ask you for your protection upon them, Lord Father. Father, even as the churches of India, Lord, go through much persecution, Lord Father. Father, we will ask you, Lord, for your protection upon the pastors, Lord, upon the leaders, Lord, upon the church workers, Lord, among the believers, Lord, even for their church building itself, Lord, that, Father, that you will protect it, Lord Father. Father, that you, Lord Father, will help them, Lord, to hold fast to you, Lord Jesus, even at the at the time of persecution, Lord, that they will persevere, Lord, in that land, Lord Father. Father, that you will give them the strength, Lord, the confidence, Lord, that the battle belongs to you, Lord Father, that they will hold fast, Lord, to you, Lord Father. Father, we want to pray your protection upon children, Lord Father, in that land, Lord Father. Father, we know, Lord Father, that every eight minutes, Lord, a child is gone missing in India. Father, we want to pray, Lord, and cry out to you, Lord Father. Father, in your own miraculous way, Lord Father, Father, that you will reunite these children to their families, Lord. Father, that you will bring confusion, Lord, to those people involved in kidnapping, Lord. Bring confusion to their mind, Lord, Father, even as they plot and plan to kidnap children, Father, that they will be so lost, Lord, that they will be unable to carry out their plans, Lord, Father. Father, that this, this kidnapping, Lord, Father, missing of children, Lord, Father, Father, we pray, Lord, that that you will bring a stop to it, Lord Father. Father, that you will reunite families, Lord Father, and let the children grow up in the, in the protection of their family, Lord Father, and with the love of their family, Lord Father. Father, we also pray, Father, for pastors, Lord Father, to shepherd the people, Lord, well in India, Lord Father. Father, that they, Lord Father, will help the people, Lord, to use your word, Lord, as their manual, Lord, for life, Lord Father. Their manual, Lord Father, that they will... Be the salt and the light in that nation, Lord Father. We pray, Lord Father, for revival, Father, in India. That, Father, that your children, Lord, will have a great hunger for your word, Lord Father. That they will read on your word and ponder on it, Lord Father, and use it, Lord Father. Even, Lord Father, to touch many lives in India, Lord Father. Father, we pray, Lord Father, for unity among all the churches in India, Lord. That together, Lord, they, they will stand together as one church, Lord one church to represent you, Lord Jesus, that no one, Lord Father, will be able to separate them, Lord, that no one, Lord, will be able to break through the churches, Lord Father, because they will be united as one, Lord Jesus. Father, we also want to pray, Lord Father, for the people, Lord Father, Father, that they will live according to your standards, Lord Father, Father, that they will put aside things like abo abortion, Lord Father. Father, we pray, Lord, for conviction in their hearts, Lord Father, that the child conceived, Lord, belongs to you, Lord, that every child is important, Lord, that you have allowed this child to conceive. Father, that they will not, Father, be irresponsible, Lord Father, in taking the lives of innocent babies, Lord Father, who have been conceived, Lord Father. Father, we pray, Lord, for the people, Lord, to have this conviction, Lord Father, that they cannot take the life of another, Lord Father. Yes, Lord Father. Father, we continue, Lord Father, to pray for your advancement of your kingdom in the land of India, Lord Father. Father, we especially want to pray, Lord, for our outreach in New Delhi, Lord Father. Father, we pray, Lord Father, that you, Lord Father, will use 
that outreach, Lord, to reach many lives, Lord, in India, Lord, that everyone who comes by, Lord Father, that place, Lord, will have a new encounter with you, Lord, that they will have a fire, Lord, burning within them, Lord, to touch lives in India, Lord Father. Father, we pray, Father, that these people, Lord Father, who come through that church, Lord Father, will go out, Lord, to reach, Lord, the unreached people groups, Lord. Father, we especially want to pray for the northern parts of India, Lord, where they have there are many unreached people groups, Lord. Father, that you will send your workers, Lord, to bring the gospel to these people, Lord. Lord, that you have promised, Lord, that everyone, Lord, will have a chance to hear the gospel, Lord. So, Father, we count on you, Lord, Father, to bring to pass, Lord, your promise, Lord, that you will provide the workers, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, for each one of us, Lord, Father, to open our hearts, Lord, Father, even, Lord, Father, to be available, Lord, Father, to be used by you, Lord, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Sunday service today. You may be seated here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, before I... We have many guests today. And before I go to that, I also think that uh, Pastor David Waters and his wife, Sister Pushpa, are in our midst. And we would like to welcome them. Okay, for those who don't know, uh, they are missionary partners in Vietnam. Yeah, and I uh, hope that you all can catch up with them after service today. Yep. And apart from them, I also want to welcome uh, visitors who are here among us for the first time today. Uh, let me get your name, Sister Amelda V. Solomon, who is visiting from KL. If you can give a wave. Yes, thank you. Um, Stefana Stevenson. Is it Stefana Stevenson? Another sister over there. And then we have Sister Grace Jaya pa Padimini. Hello, sister. Okay, and we have three pastors here. Uh, Pastor Moses Kani, who is visiting from India and will be, will be going to Canada soon. Yep. And then we have uh, Pastor Benny Vadivelu from India, Chennai, India as well. Thank you, Pastor. And we have Reverend Raja Kumari who is also visiting together. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. You may be seated. And before I go, uh, is there anyone else in the sanctuary who we may have missed out while you came in? If you are here for the first time, can you please wave your hand? Other than those who have I've called out? Uh, no? Okay, I also would like to welcome all visitors online. If you are watching us online for the first time today, we welcome you to join us and hope that you'll be blessed through our worship service this morning. Okay, and uh, for now, we would like to say a prayer of blessing over our visitors. So all around, can you please stretch forth your hands to the visitors and we will bless them. Dear Lord, thank you for these brothers and sisters who are joining us for the first time today. We believe that you have something great in store for them. We pray that you will meet their every need. And we also ask you, Lord, to pour out your richest blessings upon them. We ask you, Lord Father, even to use each one of us here at Kajang Assembly, Lord Father, to be sensitive to their needs, Lord Father, and even to be a channel of blessing to each one of them. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who are visiting us for online on, for the first time, please drop a line in the chat and our ushers will get in touch with you. Yeah, and so let's, um, now we will go to our worship in the form of giving, okay? So giving is also a type, is a form of worship to the Lord. And Kajang AOG wants to thank you, uh, each and every one of you, for your generosity and for your faithful giving. Your giving has helped us to touch lives all over the world. 
You may give through online banking, touch and go e-wallet, or physically when the offering bags are passed around. Yeah. And let's pray for our, mission, our offering tithes and mission pledges today. Lord, thank you for your manifold blessings in our life. Thank you that out of the riches of your blessed blessings to us, Lord, that we can bring back a portion, Lord, to bless you and your kingdom, Lord Father. Father, we want to thank you for every cheerful giver, Lord, and that you will meet the need of everyone, Lord, who, who is here, Lord Father, to be able to give, Lord, with a cheerful heart, Lord Father. Father, we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, and now I give you, uh, turn you over to the video announcements from Brother Isaac. Good morning, Church. These are the announcements for this week. Firstly, Missions Combined Rally. All language sections, local and foreign outreaches will be meeting together over Zoom at 8.30 p.m. for the Missions Combined Rally on the 22nd July 2022. The Zoom meeting details are as shown on the screen. Secondly, next Sunday is Mission Sunday and we have a guest speaker, Rev. Dr. Tony Chuang, to minister to us. A little about the speaker. Rev. Dr. Tony Chuang is an ordained minister and he has served as the pastor of outreach and evangelism at Hope Community Bible Church at Park Ridge, Illinois, USA, where he strategized and executed plans to help impact the undeserved community and build relationships with the unchurched. He holds a PhD in Intercultural Studies from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, Illinois, USA. So mark your calendars and I'll see you there. That's all for this week's announcements. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, let me emphasize a little bit on the church camp, okay? I think all of you should be very excited that finally we are able to have a church camp again, a family camp, after two years of lockdown. So finally, we are able to organize a church family camp and registration is open today. So I hope that all of you will go to join the queue 
for registration after service today. Okay, as advertised just now, it is from 16 to 18 September, which is the weekend with uh, Hari Malaysia, okay, at Methodist Centre Port Dixon, and our speaker is Reverend Benjamin Yeo. Okay, Reverend Benjamin Yeo is the senior pastor of Agape Community Church in Sramban, and he's the Assemblies of God Southern District Superintendent and Chairman of Board of Directors at the Bible College of Malaysia, as well as Malaysian Tamil Bible College. Okay, I think it's an exciting camp to look forward to, and uh, the registration counter will be open after service today, and you're all invited to go there and for any further questions as well. You can also register online via Google form, which will be sent out today. And the closing date, the final day for registration will be 31st of July. So please make your way. Don't wait until the last minute. Okay? Don't be disappointed in case there are no places. Okay? So I hope that many of you will be able to join us at this family camp. Okay, now it has come to a very important moment, the time that you have been waiting for. Okay, it is the time for you to open your heart to the Word of God as for today, okay? Even as you have prepared to listen to Him and He will have a special word for you. Okay, our speaker is no stranger to all of us, okay? He is famously known as, referred to as the walking Bible as he loves to quote quotation, uh, scripture when he speaks, okay? Let us welcome Pastor George Das to bring us God's word with the title, Is the Heart of Jesus Beating in Us? Am I on? Okay, good. Thanks, Edward. Thanks, Sister Eliza. How are you all doing? Good, huh? We had a good time on Friday in the Zoom, in our uh, missions combined prayer. So many of us were there on the Zoom, and we had our foreign and local outreaches joining us uh, on Zoom. So we had about nearly about uh, 260 on Zoom, but there were uh, different uh, groups of people meeting in the churches. Uh, so that we were having about more than 300 over people in the Zoom meeting. So thank you all for joining. And again, this Friday, we have the um, uh, missions rally on Zoom also uh, with the same uh, 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 Zoom details. So hope as many of you all can join uh, uh, this uh, missions rally over Zoom. Uh, I also want to take uh, this time to welcome Pastor David Waters and Pushpa. Thank you all for joining us. They are missionaries in Vietnam. And also want to welcome Pastor Benny, my friend from India. You know, earlier we, we welcomed him and his friends huh, also. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is Missions Month. And, you know, when we were planning uh, sometime early this year, uh, the mission coordinators team we were planning uh, the program for the month of July. And so we uh, put this, as, this Sunday as Missions Empowerment Sunday. And after, so this was sometime in January this year. And the later part, and the, the, sometime in April, May, as we were talking then, somebody in the, uh, in the committee asked, Pastor, what is Missions Empowerment Sunday? Actually, I myself don't know what is that. And I put the title as Mission Empowerment Sunday. But today, when I see the, the, our f pastor friends from Vietnam, from India, our missionaries here, wow, this is Mission Empowerment Sunday. Nobody invited them, but they came on their own. So truly, huh? uh, really praise God. But... Uh, of course, I got a message for all of us uh, today, uh, Missions Empowerment Sunday. Uh, but before I go into the message, just some uh, 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 housekeeping. Uh, our, our mission pledges for last year that we pledged sometime in July during our last uh, missions uh, uh, pledge, renewal pledge, 
we are still short of by about 14 percent we have only reached the target of 86 percent so we have the next uh, today and the next uh, about 14 days to fulfill our mission pledges for last year you know some of us have made pledges but have not been able to fulfill their pledges either you have forgotten or you have uh, channeled your money to maybe tithes huh? Uh, so mission pledges is different. Eh? So uh, so for those of you who have already made your pledges, please uh, we would appreciate if you all can uh, fulfill your pledges so that we can at least reach hundred percent or even more. Amen. You think we can reach hundred percent? Sure, uh, sure we can. All these years we have managed to. Uh, so let this year also we will be able to reach uh, more than hundred percent. Okay, let's uh, commit this time to the Lord. Father, we give thanks to you, God, for your word. You have something for us today, Lord. And Lord, even as we listen to your word, God, help us to be doers of the word, O God. Anoint your servant, hide him behind the cross, O God. And we pray, God, that your word will go forth like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces, O God. And Lord, let our hearts be open to receive the word with joy and gladness. We give thanks to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I've entitled my message, Is the heart of Jesus beating in us? Is the heart of Jesus beating in us? Michael Brady was a stuntman for Universal Studios. He specialized in skydiving. One day, Michael was preparing to parachute onto the top of a moving train. Climbing up the ladder on the side of the train to check some defects, Michael accidentally fell, hitting his head and dying instantly. Michael's body was taken to the medical center his heart was transplanted inside the body of another man, Bill Wohl, W-O-H-L, that is his name, eh? who has been kept alive for the previous 159 days by a temporary artificial heart. Six months and one day after getting a new heart, Bill Wohl received a letter from Michael Brady's family with a picture of Michael enclosed. Bill was surprised to find that he had the heart of a 36-year-old Hollywood stuntman. Before his heart transplant, Bill Wall had been a money-obsessed businessman pursuing a jet-setter lifestyle. Today, he works part-time, spending most of his newfound energy winning speed and performance medals in swimming, cycling, and track. Recently interviewed by a reporter, Bill glanced up at the bronze, silver, and gold medals which he had won and said, Every day I thank God for Michael Brady. When I ride, when I work out, the biggest thing is to honor him. A new heart changed Bill Wall. We too have been given a new heart when we were born again. Today, let me ask you a question. Is the heart of Jesus beating in us? And I'm sure everybody will say, yes, my heart is beating for Jesus. So what is the heart of Jesus actually? When his heart beats in us, the biggest thing in our life will be to honor him. And we will have the same passion for the gospel that he has. And this is the heart of Jesus. The passion for the gospel. Passion for the good news of Jesus Christ. His great commission will be our great obsession. 
His great commission will be our great obsession. You know, you and I might easily say amen to this statement, but do we really, really believe it? So let's be truthful to our Savior today. Are we honoring Him? Do we have the same passion for the gospel that Jesus had? Let's take the passage from Matthew chapter 28. I know all of us will, might, will know this passage. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The Lord Jesus gave this commission to his disciples to take the gospel to every part of the world. And today, from this passage, I want to bring two things to all of us today. This is a very familiar passage, and many of us would have memorized this passage. Number one, the authority of Jesus is the power of our mission. The authority of Jesus is the power of our mission. And this can be found in that same passage that we read, verse 18. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority. So the authority has been given to Jesus Christ. And today, we have that same authority. But what is the word authority? Authority means the right and the power to make something happen. The power for our mission is His authority. So mission is basically Jesus calling us to others. Our challenge is to go and exercise that authority and to win souls for Jesus Christ. I think most of us know this, huh? that we need to win souls for Jesus Christ. We need to exercise that authority. What is missing is that exercising of that authority. Authority actually means all the word power. All authority, all power. It's delegated, has been delegated to earth by Jesus Christ. When he sent his disciples out in his name, he gave them power or the authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Uh, this is found in Matthew 10 verse 1. You can uh, go back and read it. So Jesus bestows upon his disciples the delegated power that he himself possessed. That is authority to advance the ministry through healing and deliverance. The disciples were actually now modeling what Jesus had already taught them. You know, as he was discipling them, he had already shown them, you know, how to go about doing ministry, doing healing and deliverance. So, Jesus had been their role model. So the disciples were modeling what Jesus has done himself. <clears throat> and now, he's now instructing them to do it. And so, so today, you and I have the delegated authority to do what Jesus has, has already shown and demonstrated to his disciples. The disciples' mission was, see if it works and then let me know. You know, it's not that, no. Oh, you try it and see whether it works, and then let me know. Rather, it was putting faith into real practice, regardless of what the response can be, or how one was treated. You know, people can treat us badly, but our responsibility, we have that authority to go out 
and minister to people. <coughs> we are only responsible to proclaim. God's truth, we are only responsible to proclaim God's truth as effectively and as passionately as we can. And also to pray daily with authority for those whom we have shared the gospel to. That is our responsibility. That is the, the onus is for us to pray to reach out and to win the lost. But it's the Holy Spirit that is doing the work <coughs> of convicting people. It's the Holy Spirit's work. You see, you and I are not able or will not be able to convict people. There are times that in our life uh, when you know, we, we may have shared the gospel, especially to our uh, uh, friends, our colleagues, you know, we see them so often every day. We see them and we have shared with them, you know, uh, many times. But they are not responding. And, you know, uh, sometimes we get very upset and uh, especially when it comes to family members, we get annoyed, you know, with our family members. You know, yes, and still, you know, so stubborn, uh, you know, my, my parents, you know, so stubborn, they don't want to believe, they don't want to listen, you know, they shut their ears, you know, that they don't want to hear what I'm saying. I think many of us have experienced it, have encountered such situations. George Mueller <coughs> was a Christian evangelist, and many of you would have heard of George Mueller and the founder of many orphanages in England in the 19th century. In November 1844, George Mueller began to pray for the conversion of five individuals. He prayed every day without a single intermission, whether sick or in good health, on the sea and whatever the pr pressure of work that he might be experiencing. 18 months lapsed before the first of the five was converted. He thanked God and prayed on for the others. Five years elapsed and the second was converted. He thanked God for the second and prayed on for the other three. Day by day, he continued to pray for them. And six years passed before the third was converted. He thanked God for the three and went on praying for the other two. These two remain unconverted. 36 years later, how many years? 36 years later, he wrote about the other two. One was the son of one of George Mueller's friend and was still not converted. He wrote, George Mueller wrote, but I hope in God, I pray on and look for the answer. They are not converted yet, but they will be. In 1897, 52 years, how many years? 52 years after he began to pray daily without interruption for these two men, they were finally converted. Amen? But after he died. <laughs> How many years have you and I prayed for somebody, a loved one, a colleague, and given up, you know, thinking, this person is so hard in his heart. He's a stony heart. He will never, you know, never come to the Lord. You know, sometimes we say that. I've heard this from people. In fact, I myself, I said, why are you so difficult? You know, and you and I, sometimes we see things God has done 
miracles, done supernatural things in the life of that individual. You know, healings have taken place, but still they are not responding. At times, God is just saying, keep on praying. George Mueller prayed 52 years. And his you know, two friends got converted after he died. So, there are some people whose, whose lives will be changed when you are praying for them and you will see, you will see them when you are alive. But some will be after you pass on. But it's okay. It's okay. Uh, as long as they enter heaven. See, as long as they know Jesus Christ. Missions is basically Jesus calling us to others. Missions is basically Jesus calling us to others. So when we designate the month of July every year for missions, what are we actually saying? We want to reach out. Jesus is calling us to reach out to others, to go and share, go and tell, go to people. Not only during the month of July, but every day, every opportunity we need to share Christ to people. When the time came for Jesus to go to the cross, he made it clear. He still was exercising his authority. Nobody put Jesus on the cross. Nobody. He said, therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power or the authority to lay it down and I have the power or the authority to take it again. John 10, verses 17 to 18. The Romans did not take his life. The Jews did not take his life. The devil did not take his life. But he laid it down. Jesus' death was an act of authority. His authority is the power for our mission. His authority is the power for our mission. No barrier and no boundary can thwart or prevent or stop his authority or ours when we go in his name. Amen? Amen? Amen. We can, when we go in his name, we can boldly say, nothing can stand against me. Because nothing can stand against him. His authority extends everywhere. His authority overcomes everything. And we, you and I, have this authority. Our challenge is to go and exercise that authority and to win souls for Jesus. It's the heart of Jesus beating in us to go in his authority. Secondly, go and tell is the purpose of our mission. Go and tell is the purpose of our mission. Matthew 28, verse 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Go and make disciples. So go and tell. From every type of person, from every ethnic group on earth, go and make disciples. Who is a disciple? A disciple is a follower. A disciple is someone who is instructed and trained by the master. And some of us also, you know, we have made disciples before. 
you know, as connect leaders, as spiritual parents, as people, you know, of God, we reach out to people and they get saved, and then we do, you know, a discipleship class with them, lessons with them, and we teach them the Word of God. So we are modeling what Jesus has taught us, and we begin to impart to others, new converts. The goal is to find people who are not following Jesus, tell them the good news of salvation, then encourage them to become passionate followers of Jesus Christ. This is our calling as individuals and as a church community. The church of Jesus Christ is empowered with his authority, entrusted with his gospel, and indwelt by his spirit. And we sing songs, even this morning we sang songs, worship God, singing songs to, about the power of the cross. We preach sermons about winning the lost and hold meetings dedicated to reaching the world. Yet we allow thousands of people whom Jesus loves to die and go to hell. You know, we are doing all these things, okay, within the four walls of our church. But what about going and telling people out there? You know, what about telling people about the love of God that they haven't experienced yet? Thank God for people like Pastor Kala, our missionary to Cambodia, for 15 years, she just returned in January, and now she is working in the office, church office. Also, thank God for Pastor Bernard Ong, our missionary to China, and now he's seated here. <laughs> Give him a hand. Give. Give Pastor Kala a hand, but she has just stepped out for a while. <laughs> and then we have Pastor David Waters and Pushpa serving in, as missionaries in Vietnam for a long time. And I believe our pastor friends from India also serving God fervently, you know, with zeal, uh, even in, in India. And, on, and on, on Friday, during the Zoom session, we saw many of our outreach pastors, you know, on Zoom. And, uh, and a few, two weeks ago, the Reverend Solomon Kings was down in Kajang, you know. And he is also doing a tremendous work in India. So that all, all across the nations, we see uh, God's servant, God's people serving him fervently. So we thank God for all these individuals. And even our church has been sending people on short, sh short mission trips. And over the last two and a half years, we are unable to go out on uh, mission trips, mission exposure trips. Eh? We normally take about seven days, ten days to go for mission trips in, in uh, uh, different nations. And... We have been doing it except during the MCO. So because of the pandemic, we are unable to go out. So now, things are more or less normal, although we see uh, different variants coming, emerging uh, in our nation and also all across the nations. Uh, but we can start going out. I remember my first mission trip uh, with uh, Pastor Bernard. He was leading the team in 2003 to Sabah, the interior parts of Sabah. And that was my first mission trip. And that, was self, that itself was an experience because I was taken ill after eating some local food. Eh? <laughs> I was sent to the Keningau Hospital and Pastor Bernard was standing next to me praying, you know, and I was put on drips because of dehydration. But that didn't stop me from going for other mission trips. A few years later, I went to Sarawak, and then uh, when I was in Sitiawan Church, I went, we went to Myanmar, we went to Medan. So, you know, we have gone for mission trips, and some of these mission trips are real experiences because we need to go uh, to the interior parts of the country to bring the gospel. And especially in my first mission trip to Sabah, and Pastor Bernard was a good 
a leader of the mission team, you know. Very good leader, you know. And, and we are asked to do many new things. Uh, during our mission, we need to uh, do presentations and sk uh, skits uh, in our, uh, during the church services and give our testimonies. So that itself was a, a breakthrough. At that time, I was not a pastor, you know. Uh, but uh, God has been really good because uh, we, we had to even uh, cross over to the uh, interior parts by, uh, by boat, you know, uh, two hours, you know, in the, in the boat. So, uh, this, these are very unforgettable experiences. So, it's good to go on short mission trips, uh, especially when you're younger. <laughs> when you're older, uh, it becomes more challenging, yeah. you know, with all uh, aches and pains and, you know, bodily ailments, you know, you're afraid to go because thinking that, you know, something might happen, uh, toilet facilities, huh? Not that uh, good. Uh, sleeping, yeah? uh, pair, you're sleeping, you can't get that comfortable bed you know, in your home. So, but this is how uh, it tells us about the life of a, of a servant of the Lord, a missionary. You can also begin to see and relate how our missionaries over in the different nations, are, what they are going through. You see? This is something that God puts in our heart and then we also feel for that. And this is how, even though we may not be able to go, we can give towards missions. You know? So next Sunday, we will have our, uh, this, our pledge renewal Sunday. Next Sunday, we have a special speaker. So we will be renewing our pledges. So come prepared uh, to pledge for the work of the Lord so that more outreaches can be established in the coming years. The mandate of Jesus is clear. God's church is to go to all nations and preach the gospel. Today, we are not asking you to go to all the nations. God may call specific people to go as missionaries. Our mission field is to share the gospel. Wherever our influence is, and that may include our workplace, amongst family, friends, and those whom we meet daily. And verse 20 says, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus assures his disciples of his constant presence as they go on their divinely commanded mission. God promises to be with us. Sometimes we forget, you and I forget, that this verse is a present reality. That apply, This applies we need to appropriate this verse for our own lives and believe it. Go and tell. You know the, the story of that woman at the well in John chapter 4, you know, uh, who had five husbands and then G when Jesus pointed her out to her that she, had, uh, that she said she had five husbands, but Jesus said, the person that you are now living with is not your husband. <laughs> So that was a shock to her. But she encountered Jesus. But what did she do after encountering Jesus? She went to the village and began to tell people about what she has heard. She thinks this is the Messiah, the Saviour. She went and told the people. And what happened? The people came to hear Jesus. So, this is very relevant in our life. If we have experienced and encountered Jesus Christ in our life, and all of us here seated here have encountered Jesus, so we have that responsibility to go and tell. Go and tell. Is our church a come and hear church or a go and tell church? 
Tell the person on your left and right that you need to be a go and tell person. Be a go and tell person. <laughs> Beautiful buildings, good worship, cutting edge technology. Some churches have powerful media teams, you know. They are very, very powerful because as they do a lot of online, stuff, nothing wrong with that. Eh? Uh, anointed preaching are not substitutes. All these things, good as it may be, but they're not substitutes for going and telling people about Jesus Christ. With urgency, you and I must go and tell because world events are unfolding in, at such a pace that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is so, so near. So it's our heart beating for Jesus. When we know that His coming is so near, but are we living a very lackadaisical life, a life of apathy that we couldn't be concerned about going and telling people about the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Many times we expect pre-believers to come to us. He says, go and tell, huh? not huh? come and hear. Huh? Sometimes we, the early church, did evangelism on the streets. Now, we do evangelism in church. Many times we, you know, expect people to come. We bring people into church. You know, in fact, we always tell uh, the congregation, hey, bring your Christian friend. But what exactly is go and tell. Share with them the gospel first out, out there. Go and share with them. And then... Bring them here. Let me tell you about William Carey. I think some of us may have heard the name about William Carey. Most of our friends from India would have heard about William Carey. The father of modern missions. William Carey was a British and in the late 18th century, he was dreaming of India. In fact, he had maps of India on his walls. And for years, was just praying and longing and waiting for the opportunity to take the gospel to the unrich people there. He finally sailed for India from England in 1793. Support, supported by Andrew Fuller and the Baptist Church. He left England with a wife who later became mentally ill, with four children under nine years old. It took seven years before there was a first convert, and then he laboured for 40 years without a furlough. That means without uh, going on leave, huh? without sabbatical. He never came home. By the end of his life, he had lost both his first wife and his second wife by death. Twenty years into his ministry, he suffered a tremendous blow to the work. This was in March 1812, when a fire broke out and consumed the mission's compound. With years of irreplaceable work of translating the scriptures, into two different languages because he was translating the scriptures at that time. He lost all his work, dictionary, and ten versions of the Bible were consumed in that fire. This was years before there were computers. Huh? Now, I think not a problem. Huh? We have computers, we save it in the hard disk, or, huh? uh, Google Drive, we can do a lot of things. But at that time, can you imagine all his manuscripts that he had written, 
and done the translation, all was burnt. There were no copies. The work was gone. When Carey, when William Carey received the news of this, he was away at the time in Calcutta. He said, in one short evening, the labors of years are consumed. This is William Carey speaking. Eh? In one short evening, the labors of years are consumed. How unsearchable are the ways of the Lord. The Lord has laid me low that I may look simply to him. Despite all his work being destroyed, this man of God, William Carey, can say this, that I may look simply to him. The devastation of that fire, he was not concerned, but he says, I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. William Carey suffered unbelievable setbacks in his ministry. Time and time again, he suffered all kinds of heartaches and suffering. And yet he never gave up. He persevered as he really was the one who spearheaded the modern missionary movement. So that in the next 50, 60 or 70 years, there were many, many missionary, missionaries who would follow him to India and to other parts of the world. How did William Carey do it? I think the answer comes from a statement he made in a sermon in 1792, where he very simply said, expect great things, attempt great things. Wow. Expect great things and attempt great things. And William Carey was a missionary who attempted great things. But despite all the things going up in ruins, being consumed by fire, his wife, first wife, second wife passing on, despite all the setbacks, he can still say this, expect great things, attempt great things. Amen? A good motto for the mission of the church is, we are to expect great things from God. And only when our confidence is in Him, we will attempt great things. Amen? Amen. Expect great things from God. And when our confidence begins to build up in Him, growing every day, trusting Him, drawing near to Him, and we ourselves becoming more and more fruitful in our inner life, then we can attempt great things for God. In conclusion, beloved, where are we this morning? Are we engaged in the mission task of the church both locally in evangel evangelism and globally through our prayer life, supporting through our financial giving in our mission pledges? And in other ways that you and I can encourage missionaries. Today we have missionaries here with, in our midst. So after service, don't rush back. Go to them, approach them, and talk to them. <laughs> you know, make friends with them. Get connected with them. Because you can hear their heartbeat. Because it is not just, you know, uh, missions is just uh, sitting in a, in a place and giving. But you and I can connect with pastors, missionaries, who have been on the field for so many years. They have so much of experiences to share with us. Let's Take the opportunity God has sent missionaries and pastors in our midst today. You know, I just hope our church at the end of this service, don't rush back. <laughs> don't rush back for your lunch. Five minutes, ten minutes. Huh? We have these precious individuals. Share, you know, learn from them. Huh? Exchange huh? whatever you know, but you can learn much from them. We must be prepared as Jesus prepared his disciples. We are to go first to the people we know. Go to the people you know first. 
I'm not saying uh, you approach strangers. You know, some of us are very uh, uh, no problem uh, uh, approaching strangers. But some of us may find it even more difficult. But okay, you start off with approaching your friends, your colleagues, you know, your badminton friends, kaki. Mm -hmm. You know, share with them. Take time. You know, while you are engaging in exercise or in a gym, try to connect with them and tell them the good news. Many times we expect unbelievers to come to us rather than we go to them. But let me tell you, it is getting more and more difficult for people to come to church. It's easier for us to approach them outside. Okay? The mere mention of church scares people. Unlike in the 1970s and 80s, where people were hungry for God, you know, there was an atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere was, was ready, and there was revival in churches, especially even in the Assemblies of God churches in the 1970s and 80s. So many of us got saved during that period. But now it's becoming more and more difficult. The spiritual atmosphere over this land and many other nations is, big, is getting more and more difficult. So we need to pray and pray and ask God for breakthrough. As I end, we need to ask this question. Is the heart of Jesus beating in us? Are there loved ones and friends whom we have not shared the love of Jesus to? because of fear. We have the authority to go and tell those who are at our doorstep. Missions is at our doorstep. And at, at, today, some of us may not even have to go overseas. Our overseas friends are here from different nations. They are working here. Vietnamese, Cambodians, Myanmaris, uh, Indonesians, from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. There are so many of them. And you and I have that opportunity to reach out and share with them. Can I invite the worship team to come up? While we take time to worship the Lord, Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us today. Did the message minister to you? Did the message speak to you? And if it had, just give yourself to God and ask God, the Holy Spirit, to do that work in our hearts. Sarah? Can we all stand?
Hallelujah. Let me just address those who have yet to give their hearts to Jesus Christ. Whether you are here, whether there would be anyone in this auditorium, or whether you are watching online and you have come in and you have yet to give your life to Jesus Christ. You have heard this message that the church is reaching out to people who have not heard the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ is simply this, that Jesus Christ came into this world because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus gave himself up so that you and I can experience life eternal or everlasting life forever and ever with God in heaven. So today, if you are the one who have yet to give your life to Jesus Christ today, the Lord says to you, come, come, come. I invite you into my presence. And the Bible tells us that Whoever believes that Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead and you believe that with all your heart, you can be saved. And if you are the person out there who wants to give your life to Jesus Christ, whether you're online or whether you are in this room, please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Father, I know that I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin. I'm willing to turn from sin. I now invite Jesus Christ to come into my life as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. If you are the one who have said this prayer, or want to know more about Jesus, just go to our Kajang Assembly of God website and click on the link, I have decided. I have decided. And for the rest of us, today, as I end, is your heart beating for Jesus Christ? You know, at one time that we gave our life to Jesus could be one year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years ago. But today, is our heart still beating for Jesus Christ? Do we have the same passion to share the good news, to go and tell the good news to people out there who have yet to come to know Jesus Christ? Jesus said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Today, would there be anyone here who will want to be involved in the work of the Lord to share the good news? Can I ask, put up your hands. Not to go as a missionary. No, but that you want to be involved, participate to go and tell the good news. Would there be anyone? In fact, all of us should be <laughs> putting up our hands because some of us are continuously doing it but many of us have stopped doing it so can I invite you all of us put up our hands so that you also want to say amen to this go and tell go and tell is the purpose of our mission Father in heaven we give thanks to you because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to your son Jesus Christ and today that authority has been delegated to each one of us that that Lord that you have given us this power of our mission oh God and the purpose of our mission is to go and tell and Father, we just want to pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon each one of your children, O oh God. 
Lord, we just release the endowment of power, oh God, upon your people, oh God. Lord, even as you see the hands raised, oh God, Father, you know their hearts, oh God. Let their hearts be beating for Jesus. Lord, we just want to pray, God, a uh, stirring in their hearts, oh God, for a fresh awakening, oh God, for a revival to take place in their lives, oh God. Father, touch them even now, God, even as you have called each one of us to go and share the good news. Go and tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, we will be involved in this purpose of our mission, oh God. It's people out there that need the gospel of good news, oh God, in their lives, oh God. So, Father, I release your anointing upon your people, oh God. I release that spiritual authority upon them, oh God, that they will go out, oh God, and bring the good news, oh God. Lord, whether people respond to the gospel, oh God, is not our responsibility, oh God. It is for people out there, God, to give their lives to Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work of conviction, oh God, in the hearts of men and women. So, Father, we just ask, oh God, that each one of us will be involved in this work of yours, oh God. Lord, we pray, even today, even as we make a commitment, oh God, to share the good news to go and tell the good news help us we pray in our fears in our weakness oh god lord you will carry us through oh god that you promise oh god to be with us even until the end of this age oh god so god everything that we do for you oh god you will empower you will be with us oh god so father we give thanks to you for your word today we pray you bless your people oh god that they will go in the peace of god in the blessing of the Lord and may the favor of the Lord be upon your people, O oh God. We give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. So, remember, I mentioned something. Huh? Approach our friends from, from Vietnam and from India. Huh? I'll be watching you all from here. <laughs> okay. God bless you all. <laughs>